We've all kind of gone through that same thing of hearing about seed cycling and feeling like, is this witchcraft or (laughs) what is this? There's no way that seeds could do anything. But we like to say that seeds are a little bit, seed cycling is a little bit like magic and a little bit like science combined. You're rotating these seeds throughout the menstrual cycle to support the two main sex hormones that we're trying to balance, estrogen and progesterone. And typically imbalances in these hormones are what cause things like PMS or irregular cycles. More often than not, it's too much estrogen in relationship to progesterone that causes these sort of gnarly periods. So the nutrients in these seeds are supporting essentially the balance between estrogen and progesterone, the healthy elimination of estrogen, and the production of progesterone as well. Dr. Mindy here. Your body is in a a war zone. Different parts of the brain get activated depending upon how stressed you are. When you look at it from that inflammatory. It's interesting. I mean, that has some merit to it for sure. And you can't control everything. Yeah, I'd say. And what about the uh, a woman who is not pregnant, but she's aiming? I just want to welcome you both. I'm really excited to have this conversation with you. So let me just start off by saying welcome. Let's dive into seed cycling. So happy to have you gals here. We're so happy to be here. Thank Thank you for inviting us. It's such an honor. It is. Mm, We love your work so much. So we're excited to be here. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, one of the messages that I think we both share, all three of us share, is this idea that that food is medicine. And I have learned that at a very early age. I had a mother that knew from the get-go back in the 70s that food was medicine. I had a, a healing crisis in my 20s where a homeopathic doctor showed me the door out through changing my food choices. And then my perimenopausal and menopausal years I really started to combine this concept of food and fasting to use it as hormonal medicine. So I feel like my life has been on this journey of looking at food literally like we look at medicine. Seed cycling is really interesting for me because I'm going to be really transparent. The first time I heard it, I was like, there's no way. Hormones are so complicated. There's no way you're going to tell me to eat some almonds or eat, you know, whatever seeds, pumpkin seeds, and my hormonal situation's going to be better. So my first question is, what is seed cycling and why does it work for hormones? I know. We've all kind of gone through that same thing of hearing about seed cycling and feeling like, is this witchcraft or (laughs) what is this? There's no way that seeds could do anything. But we like to say that seeds are a little bit, seed cycling is a little bit like magic and a little bit like science combined. Mm. Really what it is, is that there's not a lot of research. Actually, there's not any research specifically on seed cycling, but there's so much research on the nutrients in the seeds. Mm. So what you do with seed cycling is essentially you're rotating four specific seeds throughout a menstrual cycle. So let's just say the average menstrual cycle is 28 days. You're rotating these seeds throughout the menstrual cycle to support the two main sex hormones that we're trying to balance, estrogen and progesterone. And typically imbalances in these hormones are what cause things like PMS or irregular cycles. More often than not, it's too much estrogen in relationship to progesterone that causes these sort of gnarly periods. So the seeds, the nutrients in these seeds are supporting essentially the balance between estrogen and progesterone, the healthy elimination of estrogen, and the production of progesterone as well. So the four seeds are flax, pumpkin, sesame, and sunflower. And we added hemp to our blends because they taste really good and they're a complete protein too. Yeah, we love hemp too. It makes it taste way better because as you can imagine, grounding seeds every day, like there can be, you know, a little bit of a challenge there, but we really wanted to make like a great tasting product that people would love to take every single day. And Mindy, you know so much about this, but when you think about those seeds and you think about the nutrients in them, you can understand why this could potentially work to support hormones because you have fatty acids, you have fiber, you have antioxidants, you have all these things that our hormones need to not only be effectively eliminated in the body, but also be produced and balanced as well. So that's just seed cycling in a nutshell, but we can dive into all the nutrients in the seeds too. Yeah. You know, the other thing that's interesting I find about seeds in all my research is it's an incredible prebiotic. 
So where I go with the statement you just made was, okay, if it's a great prebiotic, then do we ha- have any research on just the prebiotic component of seeds supporting the estrobilome, that set of bacteria that break estrogen down? Because I could take what you just said and go, okay, so, and I want to dive into some of these nutrients. So if it's bringing a mineral or a vitamin in the seeds, and then it's also feeding this part of our microbiome that breaks estrogen down, that makes it wickedly powerful. So do we totally. know if it, if it supports good bacterial growth? Yeah, well, you know, the the star of seed cycling is probably flax seeds because there's mm. so much research on flax seeds. And so for the first half of the cycle, through men- from menstruation through the follicular phase, you're taking flax and pumpkin. And the reason flax seeds are so powerful, they contain fatty acids, they contain fiber, but they also contain lignans. And we know that our, our gut bacteria break down lignans into these things that are kind of like phytoestrogens, basically. They have weak estrogenic properties, so I hate to say that because a lot of women who have estrogen-dominant conditions get scared of things like flax. It's kind of controversial. And some experts like to avoid like flax and soy and these phytoestrogens if somebody is dealing with something like that. It depends. It depends on the expert. No, I just like that discussion we have to unpack. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah, I know, I know. And But actually, there's really cool research that, yeah, again, the estrogenic properties are, are weaker. And actually, what we're seeing instead is a more modulating effect. So it can help to effectively eliminate and antagonize the effects of estrogen. So if somebody is dealing with estrogen dominance, it can actually be pretty helpful. That was what happened to me. I had, I've had i had a case of estrogen dominance since I started to get my periods, and especially postpartum, I had really, really horrible periods. They were heavier than normal. They were I was getting more cramps than normal. And seed cycling was pretty much the only thing that worked for me. Within one month of Crazy. seed cycling, my cramps went away. My periods were so much lighter. They went from being like eight days to being six days. So speaking from personal experience, as somebody who has estrogen dominance, I love flax seeds, but I know that, you know, some people feel differently. Right, right. You know, it's interesting. So I I, I, I don't want to leave the estrogen dominance talk for a hot moment because when you acknowledge that you are understood that you had estrogen dominance, did, was it because of exposure to chemicals or like because our experience that we've seen now, my experience with the Dutch test and looking at hormones tests is pretty much in women over 40. And we don't see a lot of estrogen dominance. We see actually a lack of estrogen. But then if you go and you look at the breakdown of that estrogen and the metabolites, you see a dominant 4-OH, which is toxic estrogen. So I don't know if you're comfortable talking, you know, a little bit about how you discovered you were estrogen dominant, because I think that might be an important nuance that would be helpful. Yeah, totally. It really started off as signs for me as a teenager, especially really struggling with acne for Mm. uh, over a decade, having really bad painful cystic acne and then having pretty bad periods, not debilitating, but they were heavier than I knew that they should be. They were a little bit longer than I knew. And then I worked with a naturopathic doctor who ran a Dutch test on me. And similarly, I found that I had estrogen dominance through that Dutch test. And then again, later running tests. And actually, estrogen dominance runs in my family. Now, there's so much environmental factors that can come to the table, especially like you said, toxins imbalanced blood sugar, yeah. stress, you know, so many different things that probably as a teenager, I I had a I was on a vegetarian diet for 25 years. And for 10 of those years, I was on a vegan diet, no shade to any of those things, but I was like a junk food vegan. So I was essentially like, as long as it didn't have animal products in it, I thought it was fine and great for me. But that probably led to a significant amount of blood sugar imbalances, insulin resistance, which I think really drove my estrogen dominance in particular. But if anybody's struggling with acne, hormonal acne, heavy periods, painful periods, that's something that they probably should look into. Yeah. And I think, and and Yasmin, I want to hear about your story with seed cycling, just so people understand the power of this before we break it into why it actually works. But, but. You said something, Kaya, that was really interesting, which is I think when we talk about sex hormones, we kind of pull them out and we make them like individuals. 
But actually, you can't do that because they all interact with each other. In Fast Like a Girl, I talk about how estrogen and progesterone were, are like twin sisters. And like we call them the same, they look the same, but they have vastly different personalities. But the co conversation that I think needs to happen deeper beyond that is if one of them's in a bad mood, you know, the other one's going to get in a bad mood too. So we need to know how to put them into balance with each other. So is that a, what we're seeing with seed cycling? And, and Yasmin, is that what you noticed when you said you had some hormonal bumps? I'm wondering if it's because seed cycling brings estrogen and progesterone together and starts to balance them in this unique way. You know, Mindy, it's interesting because I didn't know I was estrogen dominant or what was going on. I just knew I wasn't feeling well for majority of my life, probably 20 years. And it started maybe when I was 13. I had debilitating periods. I remember being in high school and not being able to go to my class. And at the time, which was very common, a lot of doctors recommend going on the birth control pill, right? So yeah. we're, we were all on it. I took the birth control pill only because of debilitating periods. And I was on it for a good maybe 15 years. And for those 15 years, I thought I was like, oh, all the horrible cramps, my skin looks clear. I thought it was doing this incredible thing. I wasn't getting my period for 15 years, which is mm -hmm. wild now being in this space, how that was happening. Um, but, you know, we weren't talking about stuff like that in the past. And I personally got off of it in my late 20s. And that's when it was horrible. So I had something called post birth control syndrome. Again, didn't even know what that was. And it felt like my hormones were completely out of control and was came back with a vengeance than when I was even at the age of 13. So I think going back to your question of you know, did I see an impact with, I think my, you know, I, I didn't test at the time, to be honest, where my hormones were, but I knew just straight, straight from my experience that it was just debilitating. I, you know, like Kay was saying, I also had cystic acne. I had debilitating cramps. Yeah. You know, I know we're all so passionate about showing up as our best selves. And that was like, how can I show up in this job that I love and four or five days out of every month, I'm completely out of commission. Like, but I thought for the longest time that was normal until saw a functional medicine doctor. She mentioned seed cycling, which similar to what you said beginning of the podcast, I was like, this is BS. Like, what is she talking about? Seeds? And I have this like major hormonal issue. And yeah, and Kaya had brought it up. She was getting her master's and, you know, they were learning about seed cycling. So that was my first foray. It took me two years to do it because I thought it was bogus and witchcraft. I was like, there's no way. But also similarly to Kaya, one month in for me, my symptoms, specifically breast tenderness, which was so painful back then, completely went away. And my cramps the first month was like 50% better and it only got better in time. So I know it sounds so crazy, but, you know, both just from my personal experience, it was just life changing. So, you know, I always love to watch the trends that go through, or I call it the cultural zeitgeist. Like, what are all the trends? Like, right now, the trend is everybody's like HRT, bioidenticals. Like, I, I call it, we've been in a cultural hush around menopause, and now everybody, it's like cultural chaos. Like, everybody's like, yeah, cream me up, patch me up. Yeah. And so I like to just, like, watch the trends and go, is that trend going to stick around? What, what are people going to do with that? So with seeds... I've been watching this trend. I mean, it's an old, yeah. ancient habit. So maybe you guys can talk to that about that. But I, it's like every once in a while, I just see it keep coming back in and coming back in. And I'm like, this trend is not going away. There has to be something there. So outside of the estrogen and progesterone balance it creates, can you talk a little bit about why it works. Like, what is the seed actually doing? You're getting a nutrient, but I could take a supplement. I could cycle those nutrients. What What is it about the seed? Yeah. So the cool thing about seed cycling is that it honors that we are cyclical beings, basically, that women have this 28-day cycle. And so we use flaxseed and pumpkin seeds in the first half of the cycle, and then sesame and sunflower in the second half. And those are you know, everybody says that seed cycling is ancient. We actually cannot figure out who invented it. We've had a few people say that they were the one or that some, <laughs> yeah, right. that this, <laughs> this other guy, this naturopathic doctor, this guy. So um, shout out to you, whoever you are. You haven't made yourself <laughs> really known, but it's become um, very popular. I think recently because Mindy, as you were saying, 
people really want to use food as medicine. They want a very natural and holistic approach. And especially people who, like Yasmin said, who are on birth control for years, for people who are just kind of putting a Band-Aids on the symptoms. They want something that they can take and feel really good about. And that's the cool thing about seed cycling is it's seeds. It's literally food, right? So there's, other than somebody having an allergy or an intolerance to the seeds, there's virtually no harm that can be done with having Mm, seeds for sure. day, right? So, you know, it's not like taking a medication. But we talked about flax, which has the fatty acids. It has the lignans. It has magnesium. Let's talk about pumpkin seeds, which are also used in the first half. So those have things like iron, rich source of magnesium, tryptophan, which we know is a precursor to serotonin, and then melatonin. So we hear so many women who say they are sleeping better than ever mm. when they when they implement seed cycling. And it's kind of a cool circle because we know that we need sleep for progesterone. And so it's kind of like working on the melatonin aspect, but it's also working to support progesterone levels. And then we have sesame and we have sunflower seeds, which contain also, again, these fatty acids and then things like manganese and vitamin E, these antioxidants and flavanols that essentially help with blood sugar imbalances and also with inflammation. And so a a lot of what we've noticed and a lot of what we've talked to with experts is that women who really struggle with their periods probably one of the number one things they can do is focus on their blood sugar. So anything that they can implement in their diet that supports healthy blood sugar is going to be a win, which is why I think the seeds work in that sense, also with reducing inflammation, also with bringing in all these nutrients that our hormones need to be produced and to be modulated as well. So it's kind of like hitting your body from all different sides, essentially using food as medicine. Yeah. So, okay. So then does it matter what type, like, Like then I, you know, when I sit at like I go to the farmer's market and I there's one vendor there that has nuts and seeds. I know, okay, it needs to be raw. If I can get a sprouted almond, that would be better. You know, so is there something we need to know about the quality of the seed or can I just rush off and start putting pumpkin seeds on my salads at at a certain time of my cycle? Yeah, well, if somebody can get their hands on these in any which way, I mean, that's going to be better than nothing. But quality definitely matters, which is why we wanted to create a product for people, because Mm -hmm. so many of the seeds that are sitting at the grocery store have been on that shelf for God knows how long. We know that seeds, when they're exposed to light and they're exposed to heat, they become rancid. So we want to make sure that people are choosing seeds and nuts. So we're making sure that people are choosing highest quality. So for us, we go with organic we try to ground, grind them as frequently as possible so they're freshly ground because you you should take ground seeds when you're seed cycling, not mm. whole seeds. That's when all the oils are released. That's when you get the beneficial oh. compounds. So okay. we, we, yeah, we have freshly ground seeds in our product, organic. We get them from a high quality farm that we love and work with. So the quality does matter. And then we also recommend refrigerating your seeds when possible because, again, when they're exposed to light and heat, they can become rancid and Nobody wants rancid oils in their body. Yeah, no, yeah. And no. Just to add what Kay was doing, because I was doing seed cycling so incorrectly for a while. But mm. even when you go to, the, I thought, oh, let me go to the grocery store and buy grounded seeds. I can just create it. But what I learned through the process of us creating our own product, when you buy cold milled seeds, which is what you have in the grocery stores, that strips out all the oils, which Kay mentioned, that's the magic and the, the mm. nutrient value in the seed. So I just want to share that because I was doing it wrong. And also we do third party testing for all the metals since we know there's been some Thank you. yeah conversation around especially flaxseed so yeah we we do all the checks just to kind of make sure of that as well so you're just so I'm have a visual yours comes in a powder is that is it like a a powder it's, or the- yeah i guess you could describe it as a powder it's not as fine as a powder but they're imagine like coffee grinds essentially but they're mm-hmm. seeds okay and i've watched on your instagram you guys put them in everything like like, which seems really brilliant. So are there certain foods? Do you just take a scoop of it and eat it? Or are there certain foods that they pair better with? Have you experimented with pairing with other foods like squashes we know will help with progesterone production? Like, have you have you looked at that combination? Yeah, that's a good question. We haven't gotten too much into the food com- combining other than saying that seed cycling is not a miracle cure. So you can't just throw seeds at your life and be doing every other unhealthy habit and expect for changes to happen. So the nice thing is that 
all of the healthy habits that we recommend, including seed cycling, are going to support all of our hormones, our testosterone, our progesterone, our estrogen. We recommend putting them in anything as long as you're not cooking or baking them. Mm -hmm. We don't want to lose the value there. So I love to blend it in my smoothies. Yasmin sometimes will put it in yogurt or she'll just take mm -hmm. it by the spoonful. It really depends. People put it on their avocado toast. They, they definitely are versatile, which is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's got to be easy. This has been my yeah. my thing that I've discovered with Fast Like a Girl was people got such women got such incredible results, like mm. dropped weight, got off medication, the fertility. Oh, my God. The number of women that got wow. pregnant following the fasting cycle that was in there. And a part of why I've thought actually a lot of like what, how it worked so well for so many women. And I think what fasting does is it gives you a break from the toxic food. Mm. And if you can put that in the appropriate part of your menstrual cycle, then, okay, now you're recovering from this Western diet. So if I start seed cycling, but I'm eating inflammatory foods, is, is what I'm interpreting you're saying is that it, it, it may not be that miracle cure that both of you experienced with this and many of the women that have used your product. Totally. But I'm sure similarly to you, Mindy, the people that are looking out for you are not necessarily partaking in very unhealthy habits. They're already primed for doing what works for them. And I love that you're incorporating that because that's just that's such a mission for us because it's yeah. we're actually not taught to think about our menstrual cycle unless we are a have really bad periods or trying to avoid pregnancy or trying to get pregnant. And those first two, it's like, yeah. forget about it. You're trying to avoid pregnancy or you have bad periods. Somebody just throws hormonal birth control at you and you're like, OK, check that off. I don't even have to have a period anymore. I don't have to think about this. And then what we often see is women in their 20s and 30s who get off of hormonal birth control after all these years. And they're like, I don't understand my body. I don't understand my hormones. I don't even know what's going on with me. Maybe I'm experiencing infertility. I need to get back on track. Hopefully they get pregnant. If not, then they have to go on this whole journey. And Yasmin and I just want to reach the younger group of women yes, specifically yeah. because yeah. if we could help them avoid all of the downstream consequences of not taking care of your hormones and things like PCOS or infertility or fibroids or cysts or all of the you know acne that we had to deal with, then that would be so nice. And they don't have to have like a crazy in-depth understanding of it all. But just basic enough to know that their everyday choices can make such a huge impact on their hormones and avoid all of these like painful things that I had to deal with. Right. You know, it's inter it's interesting you say that I was actually just coming upstairs into my office to do this interview and my son's girlfriend was over and I said, oh, I'm going to go do an interview on seed cycling. Do you know? And she's in her early 20s. I sh I'm like, do you know anything about it? I was thinking that I was like old and like, <laughs> did it, you know, was like behind the curve, like surely the 20 year old would know. And she's like, I, I don't know anything about it. She's like, I don't even really know anything about my hormones. Um, yeah. And of course, my, my brain was like, well, we're going to fix that. But but I want to I do want to zero in on this younger generation because, you know, I remember when my daughter went through puberty, she had horrible, mm. horrible periods. And so as your company has grown, what are you seeing with the that, you know, teenagers, 20 year olds? Are they embracing this idea? Are they wanting to know more? Because we have a lot of menopausal women that yeah. have have daughters in this category. And we're as, we're as equally concerned about our hormones as we are, you know, our, our own daughters. So what do we need to know about that generation? You know, what just comes to mind, which is so interesting, we actually have a lot of women in perimenopause and menopause using our blends as well. And so once they are on it, they're like, I need to get my teenage daughter onto this. And yes. we have so many because they think, and I know you talk a lot about this, they're like, if I only knew how to support my hormones in my 20s, 30s, and 40s, I wouldn't be where I am today. So we have so right. many mothers advocating for their daughters and we have family seed cycling. So I just think that is such a cool generational shift and seeing that. So it's just been really fun. Yeah. Yeah, I can't even imagine. My mom would have never said to me when my 20s, like, hey, hey take some seeds. And like, it, it, we weren't even thinking about the menstrual cycle back there. And and I feel like now it's like coming in vogue and we're, and we're actually starting to talk about it. So, oh, it's um, so nice too, because when I was growing up, 
it actually wasn't really that cool to think about your health mm-hmm. in general. Mm-hmm. Like, no, kind of wanted to go. My 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 family is South Asian. We're Indian. And there's so many Ayurvedic principles that my parents would bring into our lives of like, mm. if you're feeling, if you have aches and pains, take turmeric, take honey, don't go just reach for, you know, Tylenol or this or that. And I kind of fought against those things because I wanted to be so westernized. I wanted to be so cool. I wanted to eat Pop-Tarts with my friends. I didn't care about any Dude. of that stuff. I wasn't yep. exercising. And so what what I've seen, the shift that I've seen recently with these younger generations yeah. is it's actually cool to care about their bodies. It's cool yeah. to care about their health. It's cool to take care of themselves. And I'm so, I'm just so hopeful for those group mm-hmm. of people because they have, they have so much accessibility with social media. I know there's a downside to it, but just to see like what's in tr- what's trending, what's healthy, what they can do. And um, I'm just happy they're getting educated. And yeah. can I always talk about like, how do we make hormones fun for women like us, yes. and younger women? So we talk about that every week with our content. Like, let's make it fun. Even for me, if yes. it's too technical, I'm like, you lost me. You know, you lost yes. me. So we talk about it all the time. <laughs> you know, I that's what when I put the fasting cycle together, I actually did it for my patients. And then I was like, okay, follicular, luteal, like, you know, it's just so, and then you start luteinizing hormone, follicular stimulating, like at some point your eyes roll back in your head. (laughs) And so that's why I was like, okay, let's just call this what happens here, power phase, manifestation. Like I came up with those fun words and it was actually a conversation with Dr. Carrie Jones. Oh, she's amazing. uh, She's incredible. And I learned how to read the Dutch chest from her. And when she went down to teach me all that, I looked at her. I'm like, these, this is way too complicated. She goes, yeah, you know, we really should be giving hormones nail, nail polish names. Wouldn't it be a lot easier if they were nail polish names? I'm like, I love yes, that. <laughs> they would be. So I love, I love that you guys are making it fun. And I think hormones are fun. Yeah. We, we curse hormones. But if you actually knew what hormones were doing for you, you would be like, I have a lot of progesterone today. I'm going to sit on the couch. This is so great. I have an excuse. Or yeah. I have a lot of estrogen today. I'm feeling very social. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's if we truly understood it, we wouldn't be cursing them. So I love that you guys are keeping it fun. So thank you on that. Oh yeah, for sure. And I and I think I think us women and younger women too, even I can think back to my high school days, I think intuitively we know, we understand those shifts, but we can't explain them. Mm-hmm. And because right. society is set up in a way that does not honor those shifts, we fight against them. But I remember even from an early age feeling like this deep reverence for okay, I feel different when my period comes. I feel different the week leading up. What does that mean? And I couldn't put words to it until I got much older. But it's so cool when you understand it and you lean into it and you accept that this is all women go through this in in one form or another. And when we honor it and when we respect it, it can be such a huge superpower. Yeah, amazing. So I want to break down a couple of the seeds because I I have a few questions on them. Like flaxseed, I heard... You should never have the full flax seed that now you're grinding them. But I've heard that the oil, like the the power of flax seed isn't actually in the seed. You have to sort of uh, manipulate it a bit to be able to get the healing power. Is that true? That's definitely what we learned from our medical advisor, who's a naturopathic doctor, and everybody who recommends seed cycling to ground the seed specifically. And that's when you really get the nutrients out of them. Okay. and. You put flaxseed in from which days of the cycle? So flaxseed and pumpkin seeds, you're taking a tablespoon of each from day one through day 14 of your cycle. So day one being the first day of the period and then day 14 being roughly around average ovulation. You're taking those two specific seeds to support estrogen and also healthy estrogen elimination and then also pumpkin to help with progesterone which is coming you know after ovulation so for day 15 to 28 you take sesame and sunflower seeds so that's interesting because the way i always understood pumpkin seeds was it was pro it was for progesterone like i always like like it helps to build progesterone so you're using flaxseed to help with estrogen, good estrogen balance, and then you're bringing uh, pumpkin in with the flaxseed to help support estrogen progesterone balance, specifically coming out of ovulation, heading into the back. Is that do I have that right? Exactly, exactly. Okay, that's yes, really, yeah. 
pumpkin seed was the first was the one that I didn't really understand why it was always put in that for follicular phase, for lack of a better term. So I, I like that. It's and and I think we can take a rule like that. And we can apply it to a lot of things because what I'm hearing you say in that combination is use flax for more estrogen, use progesterone for more or use pumpkin for more progesterone so you can balance that those two out. Again, we're not pulling these hormones out into little silos. Mm -hmm. We're looking at how they go together. Is that, am I understanding that logic was, re I think it's important because otherwise people are going to start, oh, I'm just going to dump some flax seeds on my salad. But it's really the interchange between flax and pumpkin that works at that part of your cycle. Is that correct? Totally. And that's, again, what we see so often these days, especially amongst younger women, is their progesterone is in the toilet and their estrogen is maybe too high. And that's what's causing their PMS, causing really mm -hmm. horrible cycles. And also, I think a lot of it has to do with stress because we know that progesterone and stress, the relationship between them is is iffy. If stress is playing a dominant role, and then progesterone is going to say, see you later. So we really want to support that specific balance. And sometimes it's not, oh, somebody's flat out estrogen dominant. It's just that they don't have enough progesterone to support that balance, as you mentioned. So that's what those seeds are doing at that particular time, yeah. not to mention all of the other beautiful qualities that they have in there, too. Yeah, you know, one of my other shockeroos from Fast Like a Girl going out into the world, and you all probably see this from your podcast followers and your the people that are using your product, is how many 20-year-olds do not have a period. Yeah. And it's either because of birth control or mm -hmm. I think it's largely because of stress. I think the stress levels of the teenagers and the, and the, and the 20 year olds is so high. And whenever stress is high, progesterone is shy. She's out. She doesn't do well in, with cortisol. So could, have you seen anybody start to use seed cycling and specifically leaning into estrogen or leaning into flax? and pumpkin, and they actually start to get their cycle back. Yeah, that's one of the coolest ones. I think there's there's so many cool ones. Get it, helping people get pregnant, I love to see that. And then also people who have not had a regular cycle or a cycle sometimes in years yeah. all of a sudden get their period back. We've had, I mean, Yasmin, maybe you can kind of point out some of the more specific stories I can't remember now, but we've had people who, who haven't had a, a period in maybe like two years. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they start seed cycling and within like three months they get their cycle back. And gosh, what a wonderful feeling that must yeah. be. <laughs> oh. Right? Like, they're always I, shocked. Yeah. They're always Amazing. shocked, especially if they're kind of thinking about family planning. They want to make sure they're menstruating, they're ovulating. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of women. We spoke to a woman recently who was having an ovulatory cycle. Yeah. So she was having a period, but she wasn't ovulating. And mm -hmm. so seed cycling was help, basically able to help her get her ovulation back, which is we know the main event of a menstrual cycle and so important. So anytime I can get people's phases to come back, we feel super excited. Yeah, that. Yeah. And I mean, I was just shocked shocked at how many women don't have a period. And I, it bothered me so much that I actually started to look into what happens when we shed each month. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you think about the menstrual cycle, it's like nothing in there is a mistake. And so why would our uterine lining every month shed? And of course you have to let the unfertilized egg out somehow. So you got to get all the hormones that came in at this big peak during ovulation. It has to go somewhere. But the shocking thing that I found was that there's actually four toxins in menstrual blood. There are pesticides, there are phthalates, there are forever chemicals, and there are plastics. And this is based off a, a PubMed study. So literally shedding every wow. month is so much more than your ability to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. It's actually how we detox. Mm -hmm. So using something like seed cycling seems like a really cool way to bring that cycle back. Do we know anything about these seeds and what they do for detox? I, I feel like you had mentioned something earlier about that. Yeah, well, we know that 
and and Mindy, you explained this so eloquently in your videos that healthy ele- estrogen elimination is really key, and that happens through our gut and our liver. And so, I think specifically things like flax seeds also help with that. Anything that has a lot of fiber in it is going to yes. help with mm-hmm. that elimination yeah. of estrogen that you don't want recirculating through your body, causing all these issues. So I. I personally believe, and just looking at all the nutrients in the seeds, that it is helping with that. And it's such a good point, too, because when we shut down our period, we're not getting this beautiful thing we get every month, which is a report card for yeah. our health. And Ooh, so well essentially, like, every month your, your, your period tells you, like, how am I doing? Am I so stressed that my period went away? Or am I so going through something that my period is super heavy or super light or it's irregular. I don't know when it's coming. Yeah. And so our periods give us so much valuable information. And it's it's really sad for me to see somebody want to just voluntarily shut that down versus thinking, how yeah. can I optimize it and make it what it is? And And I think that's why so many women are so in tune with their bodies, because we get that monthly report card. We understand more so how our bodies are doing versus men, they don't get that information and they don't get that way to properly detoxify. I remember when the raw food movement was really popular in the early, I mean, when was it? 2008, 2009. All these women were stopped getting their periods and they thought, oh, that's good. That's a good thing because, you know, and and really what it was is they were just, they were not eating enough food. They were under eating so much that their bodies were like, we're shutting down reproduction or any opportunity of reproduction so that you're not getting a period. But again, we really want women to feel like their periods are powerful and their periods yes. can be really beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for that. I, you know, it's, it's, I too, I love the the analogy of a report card. You know, I am working a lot more with the perimenopausal and menopausal women, but in perimenopause, mm-hmm. you know, one of the things that's very classic and I'm I'm thinking about the seeds through through this lens is that you start clotting. Yeah. And that's a sign of low progesterone. So it's a sign like, hey, we got to work on stress. We got to bring glucose up. And now you have me thinking we need to bring in some some more seeds. So have you seen with menopausal women the symptoms balance a little bit? Periods change yeah. a little bit? I actually tell Yasmin all the time, we talk about this, that Seed cycling is probably the best suited product for women in perimenopause. We've had so many women in perimenopause who feel like they're not themselves, their periods are out of whack, they've shortened, they've lengthened, they don't really understand what's going on, they're not sleeping well, their libido is gone, and then they start to use seed cycling and their cycle becomes regulated again. So they almost feel like they're not perimenopausal anymore. So and anytime you can get that extra, extra time or those extra years to have a regular cycle, that's really nice, especially a lot of women who report their libido coming back after seed cycling. That's that's amazing. And so amazing. we've also had a lot of women who are going through menopause and postmenopausal use seed cycling. And Yasmin and I want to look into this a little bit more and hopefully one day create a product specifically for them. They can use seed cycling as it is. But uh, what we understand from our medical advisor is that it's really the flax and the pumpkin phase that's most important for them. So if anybody is at home listening to this and they're going through menopause or postmenopausal and wants to do seed cycling on their own, they can just take a tablespoon of flax and pumpkin every single day. They can use our product too and it's still great, but if you just want to focus on one phase specifically, it's really that flax and pumpkin that's going to help with estrogen and help with progesterone and all of that in those years. I love that. I love that. I mean, again, I, you know, I I just got off a call with my membership academy and we went through all the different ways you can detox. And I was like, before you spend money on expensive detox programs, let me walk you through the basics of what it looks like to detox that will actually save you money. So when I hear what you're saying, I'm like, yeah, like, you know, if you could take the, you know, things like the timing of fasts and the things like, I really believe that there's moments for women to go high carb, low carb. And then we've got great conversations right now about protein and adding protein back in. And then we put seed cycling into this. Now you're actually giving approachable, 
cost-effective strategies for women that are suffering instead of us bouncing from doctor office to doctor office to doctor, trying to get the antidepressant right and the patch right and the cream right. Like that is causing as, as much crazy making as the symptoms themselves. So I love what you just said about the perimenopausal and menopausal women taking this. And I, I'm excited to try it myself. So yeah. And I think too, you know, thinking about those years and specifically perimenopause and menopause and making them more manageable. Like I love the food as medicine approach. And I've learned from experts such as yourself that really everything that we do leading up to those years specifically with stress management, because at a certain point, our ovaries shut yeah. down and our adrenals take over. Anything that we can do to support the body when it comes to stress, when it comes to nutrients, when it comes to gut health can be so valuable. And that's why I love seed cycling, because I actually think that you can also eat to improve your stress response by eating specific nutrients. So I think all of these things help at every stage of a woman's life. Of course, you want to, you know, make sure you're older. I don't, I'm not going to give my toddler these seeds right now, but when she's older, you know, and she starts to get her period, I'll, I'll give them to her. And that's the beautiful thing about using food is anybody can use it. Yeah. And and there's no there's no consequence yeah. if you're using clean. I mean, that's the most obvious. Like your body, you know, it's your body f figures it out because it's in harmony with what your cells want as opposed to a chemical that is out of harmony. So I I, I really want to point that out. Um, the two other seeds, the sesame and the sunflower. OK, this one's interesting to me because sunflower seed oil is not healthy. And, and it's highly processed and it's inflammatory. But what you're saying is sunflower seeds actually is. So can you break down the, the what, what's going on with those two seeds? Yeah, I think all the refined seed oils. So, t so right now we're seeing a lot of people talking about vegetable oils and these refined seed oils and how problematic they are. And that's essentially it because they're so processed. They're so refined. We don't want to be getting our omega-6 fatty acids, which are important, by the way, from those sources. When we get them from real whole food sources, that's when it's good. And when you're also eating them with enough omega-3 fatty acids too, which you know, flax has, gosh, I'm having such bad pregnancy brain right now, a AHA, which converts to AP. I don't know. You're, we'll al you're allowed out. to have a pregnancy. <laughs> I sure, surely you brought Lisa Moscone on your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> she explains you're actually, your, your neurons are pruning away. So you're allowed to not forget. I, I feel it. I feel it. But, <laughs> you know, you want to make sure that you're getting a good balance of omega-3 to omega-6. The nice thing about these seeds is that they're whole, they're not seed oils, they're not refined, they're not processed, they're really in their whole form, other than the fact that we ground them. So they're definitely a much better choice than taking something like a vegetable oil or, or seed oil. And then sunflower and sesame seeds, they have selenium, they have manganese, they have antioxidants, mm -hmm. flavanols, all these things that are anti-inflammatory. We were also a bit confused in the beginning. Flax I get, pumpkin I get, sesame I get, sunflower we're still learning more about. And actually what's really exciting is that Yasmin and I are going to be doing the first ever clinical trial on seed cycling pretty soon. Woo! So we just started. Awesome. Yeah, we just started to work with a company. We're going to be recruiting about 40 women to go through this process. And so hopefully we'll be able to bring so much more information to the table because anecdotally, we've seen just how powerful this can be for thousands of women who report back to us. And now we'll be able to bring some research to the table and show really what it's doing. That is, I'm so excited you you all are doing that. I mean, I, I've watched, I've listened to your podcast. I see your reels and stuff. And I know you've had conversations around how little information there is out there for women. And and putting together a research study is not really easy. I know. And I don't think it's cheap yeah. as far as I know. <laughs> We've been wanting to do it from like day one when we launched. But like you said, there's a lot of investment that goes in there. And finally, we, we just are so confident in this. Like Kaya said, we see thousands, tens of thousands of women seed cycle on our product, off our product. And we know there's something there. So we're just so excited the time has come. So we'll keep you posted Amazing. once we go through it. And it's yeah. such a good point, too. We It's like you don't know how bad you feel until you feel good. And so we mm. both personally know that when how our cycles are when we're not seed cycling oh, yeah. and versus when we are seed cycling. So for me, I 
during my first pregnancy, obviously, I'm not seed cycling when I'm pregnant. When I have a newborn, I wasn't really thinking about anything other than keeping a newborn alive and keeping myself going. So I wasn't seed cycling that whole time. And then it's always a nice reminder when Yasmin and I bring it back into our lives more ritualistically that we're like, wow, this oh, yeah. works so well. And we can see it in ourselves. Like our periods are so much better. We feel so Mood. much better. Yeah. Mood. Oh my gosh. The mood thing. Yeah. That was huge for me because Amazing. about two days before my period, most of my life, I would feel like the world was falling apart. Yeah. I would question everything. I would pick fights with my husband, whatever it was. It was just, it was bad. And then since seed cycling, I have not been experiencing those intense mood shifts, which we hear a lot from our from our community too. I'm, I'm going to do the game that everybody does to me, which is... <laughs> Who shouldn't seed cycle? Everybody always asks me that with fasting. Who shouldn't fast? And I'm curious if there's some of an overlap, but of the same per type of person. But who is there anybody who should not seed cycle? Yeah, totally. Well, our specific blend does contain a little bit of chamomile in there. So if anybody's dealing with a ragweed allergy or an allergy to flaxseed, pumpkin, sesame, or sunflower, sometimes people don't even know they have an intolerance yeah. to those things. And then they try our product and they might discover that they have that. So allergy or intolerance for sure. Again, anybody who's dealing with any sort of active sort of breast cancer or estrogen dominant related condition should work with a practitioner. Now, ideally, that practitioner will be well versed in some of these things and maybe tell them like it could be safe for you depending on where we're at. My mom, she went through breast cancer and the doctor that she worked with was able to bring back things like soy and flax seeds into her diet. And we felt really good about it. But it really depends on your practitioner. We also recommend that, you know, if they're younger, if they're if they're younger, their family members evaluating them or their doctor feels good about it just because under the age of 18, you always want to make sure everything's OK, even though it's real food. And there are so many teenagers who work with their parents and, and it works for them. If you don't have a menstrual cycle, you don't need to seed cycle. Yep. If you're pregnant, I don't recommend seed cycling. If you're breastfeeding, it depends, again, what your doctor says. But there's really not a long list of people. Right. Yeah. Why not during pregnancy? Because if it's just food, you just don't want to mess the hormonal rhythm up. That's Yeah, there's so much going on. going on with your hormones already when you're pregnant. There's so much to think about. I use it right now being pregnant. I'll use it as extra source of fiber in my smoothies here and there. I'll just add it to things. But there's not a cycle to regulate at that point. There is just this huge production of hormones happening all at once. So you don't necessarily need to cycle something when you're not cycling. But there you go. post, <laughs> but you can add it in, you know, you can much. add it in here and there. Some people yeah. are weary about hemp when they're pregnant, depends on the person. Post pregnancy, postpartum, it's been so critical for me when I got mm -hmm. my period back. It was one of the things that really helped get my hormones back in balance that I recommend to everyone who, once you get your period back after after you've given birth, it can be so crucial. What do you? What about people with the ox oxalates and lectins piece of the conversation? You know the the and I I I had a really interesting discussion with Stephen Gundry on this because my feeling around the oxalates and the lectins are if you have gut dysbiosis then yes, you could have a reaction to a toxin that's in, you know, something that nature has provided us in a vegetable or seeds or nuts. But actually, if you have a healthy gut, you actually are fine in to be able to lean into some of these. And Stephen actually agreed with me. He's like, yeah, everybody yeah. thought it was like a, an absolute. I'm like, well, you you are the guy that's created the plant paradox like but you know but i think this is something that we do with nutrition that is no is is a disadvantage to us is we take each nutritional idea and we become zealots for it we think it's an absolute and we and then we struggle because it wasn't the thing that like you know made our life completely different or it made our life really worse so do we know anything about the oxalates and lectins from seeds yeah, I have to admit, this is a conversation I'm not super well versed on and mostly want to roll my eyes when I hear because <laughs> I... <laughs> okay, sorry. No, I mean, to upset no, the pregnant woman. No. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not from you. you not from okay. you, but more so from when it's made to be this huge thing, mostly because I feel like 
So many people yes. are not even eating enough whole foods as it is. And Thank now we're you. telling them to eliminate an entire group of foods that could potentially be a source of whole foods. And then they're there. That's like leading to some sort of orthorexia. I personally Thank you. will say I do think it is an issue for some people. And we do have a lot of women who are using seed cycling who have gut imbalances. That's pretty common, I think, especially when women who have really horrible cycles or they're navigating perimenopause and that's really tough or menopause and it's really tough. Gut imbalances are common. We haven't had anybody experience any sort of negative side effects when it comes to their gut health that are outright. Um, Yasmin, you can correct me if I'm wrong. It's may maybe some people feel like Oh, I'm a little extra bloated. I would say, if anything, we have a small percentage of people who are like, oh, I feel a little bit bloated, but I think they're just not used to getting that much fiber in their diet. So we'll tell them, oh, yeah. start with half a scoop and slowly build your way up and they feel fine at with time. Right. And make sure that you're hydrated yes. enough, right? Because if you're eating more fiber, you want to make sure you have enough water to support that. Otherwise, you could end up getting more constipated or more bloated. We haven't personally seen that, but and maybe if somebody's listening to this and they've tried seed cycling and they have an issue with lectins or oxalates, then I would love to hear from them. But again, sorry, Mindy, it was not about you. It's more so. It's, <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's, it's really just because I feel that we're we're who who says it really good. We're majoring in the minors when we talk Ooh, about things so like well oxalates said. and lectins, yeah. like. I would just love for the majority of the population to be eating more real whole food. Thank and I you. think that would solve a lot of our problems. Yeah. No, it's, you know what? I, I would got so frustrated with this <laughs> the other day because I'm like, when people get like, but this health influencer says this, and then this health influencer says this, but, and then my doctor said this, and then they're all opposing each other. And I finally like lost it one day, just like your frustration right now. And I was like, look, we have to look at this like a toolbox. Mm -hmm. If you were going to build a house and you had a set of tools, you wouldn't pick up the hammer and then look at the, the screwdriver and be like, eh, the hammer is better than the screwdriver. Screwdriver is not good enough. You would actually know that each tool was used for different things. Mm. And you would stop com comparing them with each other. But I think, and and again, you guys are very much deep in this health and hormone movement with your podcast and your product. I feel like one of the biggest disservices we are doing right now is trying to to say there's one way, and that's the only way. And then the people are like, "Well, forget it," you know? They're like, "Yes, I, yeah. I don't even know what to do now." Totally, so totally. We ha we have to invite it all into the conversation. And then say, you play with it. You see what works for you. So that actually brings me to even the seed cycling. You know, does it come in like a bag? Like, it, does it come in four different bags? Does it come in two different bags? What happens if I, if I take some of the seeds at the wrong time of the cycle? Can I mess this up? I know these are the kind of questions that our listeners are thinking about. Yeah, it comes in two bags. The first one is with the flax and pumpkin, all grounded. We add hemp and a little bit of chamomile. And then the second is the sunflower and sesame and the hemp and the little bit of chamomile. And we get that question all the time, Mindy. We have women emailing us. And they're like, I was so perfect. I missed two days. Yeah. I'm like, listen, don't let perfect get in front of good. Like, it's just all about consistency and what is even good for your lifestyle and how can, how does it, become just easy for your own habit. So exactly. If you miss a few days, no issues. Some people mess up, you know, the phase because they're kind of confused with their cycles and they'll email us and we'll kind of help them get back on track. But it's food. You can't mess it up. It's all about the long term ritual that you incorporate with seed cycling. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And they're totally seasons to life, too. Jolene Brighton explains it so beautifully with seed cycling. She says, there are seasons of my life where I'm not going to be focused on this particular thing. I'm traveling. I'm going around. I'm, I'm focused on my kids, whatever it is. And then I notice that I feel off track with my cycle and I bring seed cycling back in. So it's definitely not about being perfect yeah. by any means. Thank you. Th I, I'm hoping everybody's hearing that because we we get a lot of questions about like, oh, my God, did I break my fast? What if yeah. I, you know, what this? And I think that there is a concern amongst women that, oh, I'm going to do it wrong mm -hmm. and then I'm going to have wasted money. And I just want to free women from that mentality, too. And so everybody listening, you can't do it wrong. It's food. So mm -hmm. so, yeah. So thank you for that. Yeah. What? So we've talked about 
puberty, I'm going to say postpartum because you said don't necessarily do it during pregnancy and then perimenopause. And you talked about how important this would be during the perimenopausal time. Of all those categories of people, do you see who is it the younger generation that's gravitating to this? Is it the perimenopausal? Like, is there a, an avatar? I don't know another way to say this that gravitates to seed cycling. Is it women at the end of their rope? I mean, you guys have a lot of people buying this product. What are you seeing as far as the person that really is gravitating to this? Yeah, we ask this question all the time because actually when Kay and I launched, we thought it would only be about women in PMS, but we had so many other women reach out and want to try it. So we've done many surveys and I would say the average, at least that we're seeing, are women who are around 28 to about like 50 who are seed cycling oh, wow. with us. Yeah. That's yeah, the time. Yeah, have Yeah, that is the that's definitely the time and it's so interesting that a lot of these women in a way we are the end of the line for them which makes me a little bit sad but also like I'm so happy to be there for these people and Mindy I'm sure you feel the same way about yeah. your community too that they've been dismissed for years that they've been looking for answers for years that they suspect they have endometriosis or they you know had a hysterectomy at a very early age and they're navigating some challenges later in life and they're really just seeking out answers and they come to us really as a as kind of a last option and we we're not necessarily the experts in the way that can help everybody but we point them in yeah. the right direction we say seed cycling can be a part of your toolkit we try to give them as much education as possible mm -hmm. we're all about like how can we give as much free education so we women can take control of their health. But it really does speak to this movement of women who are like, okay, you know, my doctor couldn't help me or this person couldn't help me and I need to start to look for my own answers. Yeah. My biggest cry right now is we, it, I love that we're talking hormones finally. I love that this cultural conversation is happening, but let's not forget lifestyle. It yeah. has to be. Lifestyle has to be. So I, when I hear you say it's we, we are the last resort for a lot of women, I'm like, OK, together our voices can start to change that mm -hmm. because it should be the first resort. Then you don't have to be looking for a last <laughs> a last yeah, resort. True. So totally. And, and then one of the questions I know that I'm going to get and I'm actually my my fasting brain is looking on this is can you use it in your fasting window? What does it do for blood sugar? If it's a powder, I'm like, could I put it in my coffee? What could I, like, what have you tried? I don't know if you both, I know, Kaya, you're probably not fasting, but right now, but I hope you're not fasting right now. But <laughs> is there opposite, a way? Opposite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is there, I'm wondering like, A, what does it do to the metabolic system? And I'm wondering how we can add it to something that would go in the fasting window, perhaps. I haven't tested it on like a CGM or anything like that. I would love to, but, you know, Mindy, just kind of asking you, have you seen certain things like hemp, which technically are a complete protein, that would potentially break somebody's fast, I suspect, even if it is ground. So I'm not sure, but it would be really cool to experiment and see what it does to somebody's blood sugar or if they're trying to you know, stay in ketosis or something like that. Maybe that'll be an experiment that try we that. run. Yeah, because we know people yeah. put yeah. it in their coffee. So I'll try it one day fast and see what it does. Put a CD yeah, on. Yeah, and I'll try it as well. it would be interesting to note because one of the ideas around hunger is that you, you, our human cell, cells are not hungry, but the bacteria in our gut are, is hungry. So in my community, we actually played a lot with, okay, what if you put you did a probiotic while you were fasting? You know, what if you do some of the prebiotic powders? Like we've played with everything to see if we could get the microbes to be satisfied so they stop sending you hunger sin, uh, signals. I also am wondering, you know, I'm really a fan lately. I've been talking a lot about how the first meal matters that first meal into your eating window. You know, everybody got excited about fasting. Some people got critical of fasting. And I always say it's only one side of a metabolic e equation. We have a fasting window, we have an eating window, and we have switching between these two. So that first meal into your eating window, I'm thinking something like this. I, I actually used to put hemp seeds on avocado with sauerkraut. That was my breakfast meal all the time. So I'd be curious if you guys, if you all try adding in the powders. I mean, again, Yasmin's fasting, uh, Kaya, you're not, but and see if if that would, you know, what that would do to stop hunger. 
how you would feel, if that would be another level we could unite our messages to get more rhythm going with these hormones. So you, you may have an answer to that. If not, go re- go go experiment. Let me know. Yeah. We love telling people to take it in the morning. Some people take it at night, actually, because they feel like they sleep better when they take mm-hmm. it, which is really cool. But we love to tell people to take it in the morning because, as you mentioned, that first meal, the way that you break your fast, whatever kind of fast you're doing, 12, 14, right. 16 hours, is so important and can set you up for yep. a disastrous day of a yep. blood sugar roller coaster and feeling moody or hangry, or it can set you up for a really good day. And so getting that balance of protein, fat, and fiber is so nice in the morning. And the nice thing is that seeds have all of those things. They have the protein, they have the fat, they have the fiber. So it's a good addition to you know, something like you said, avocado with sauerkraut with seeds. That, that sounds, sounds great. So healthy. I know. That sounds great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was literally my go-to forever, like, because I was trying to, you know, see what I could do for my microbiome. Yeah. And so that was, and then sometimes I'd add chia seeds, like I got, that's where I got into seeds. I feel like you all have just taken this to another level, which is, is beautiful. And I'm just a fan of food as medicine. Like, I just, I, I, I agree with you, Kaya, about like, like, let's get off the absolutes. Let's get off the rhetoric. Let's just come back to nature provided some amazing hormonal medicine. And you all are doing an incredible job showing us how to use that. And, and I think we, we won't have to lean into the, all of the HRT and bioidenticals as much. And I'm not, I'm not opposed to those. I just think you're taking women that are so, lost and they're trying to grip on to the patches hoping that's going to be the thing without looking at something as simple as adding seeds back in like it's it's so simple <laughs> so totally yeah, yeah anything so- that we can do earlier on to kind of prevent having to take not that they're necessarily drastic measures but they can feel drastic to a lot of people is so beneficial and we're so lucky to get to learn from you, Mindy. Yeah. We've learned so much from mm, every all of your education and everything that you've taught us. So, you know, the 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 love is so mutual. Yes. Thank you. Well, we're way more powerful together. I, you know, I really I, I don't know if you all are feeling feeling this and I'll I'll end it on this women's empowerment moment, but I really feel like women are waking up mm. and they're like, wait a second, my body's different than a man's body. So what does that mean? Like that that aha is happening in so many women's head heads. That is where we start this discussion. Now, the challenge is that there still is a big pharma has every every, every desire to keep us medicated. I'm not anti-medication. I just think it should be last resort. So I just think we have to take conversations like this and spread it out so that we can all just at least go from a mind that was closed to a mind that's open now. And then together we can really figure this out. We're, we're way more powerful together. So, so I just love this. So, okay. My, well, before I ask you my final question, how do people get a hold of your products? And I'm going to really encourage my followers to give it a, a go. And what would the go be? Is it 30 days, 90 days? Like, what do you typically tell someone to do? Yeah, we always like to say give it, which I'm sure you know, Mindy, at least three months, 90 days to kind of see the impact. So on our website, which is beawellness.com, we allow you to do one month if you just want to try it, see if you can even add it to your day to day. Or it's, you know, we give you a bigger discount with the three months just because we really want to encourage women to get that real experience. And then you would just continue from there. Yeah. And and I would say I agree with that. It takes the body sometimes 90 days to adapt. But like you said, often people see changes within 30. So totally. yeah, yeah, I, th- I, th- I think that's absolutely brilliant. So and then y- you guys will have codes for us, discount codes. We'll leave that in the in, unless you know it off the top of yeah, your head. Well, but Pels, P-E-L-Z, we'll get $5 yep. off. So but we'll make sure to give you all the information that you can add in your show notes as well. Great. Wonderful. Okay, my last question. And I always love this one because I don't know what anybody is going to say. And Jasmine, <laughs> I'm going to start with you. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna give the pregnant woman a moment. To, <laughs> to, She's been on a roll. Yeah, they're so proud. <laughs> I know. She probably needs to go eat here. And- I'm over here sweating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So what is your definition of health? Because we're all chasing something that we have not given a a unified definition to. And how do you know Mm -hmm. what's your personal measurement for health? So what's your definition? What's your personal measurement? I would say the way 
I would personally define health is how I'm personally feeling in my own body. I think we can get so, and I've been there before and I have to reel myself in. You can get, you can just compare yourself to other people. What works for this person, how this person is feeling, how this person is showing up. And I'm like, what really matters is how do you feel in your own body? And that even goes to not doing certain trends, not eating something that doesn't feel right for you. So I think about that a lot. And then your second question, Mindy, remind me, I'm not pregnant, but I don't remember. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for that clarification. Where are you? Where are you in your cycle? Maybe that'll help me understand. Oh, my gosh. I'm on my luteal phase for sure. (laughs) Okay. Okay. That's good. Yeah. There's we've already had we've already had enough stress going on then for you. Like how you know, how do you know you're healthy? Like I think you probably just answered it. Like I think there's we we tend to ignore health until we aren't healthy. Yeah. So do you have like a day-to-day check-in to say, yeah, I'm, I'm moving in the right, the my, right direction? Yeah. And I know you've been talking a lot about burnout and my whole life, I think I've been chronically burnout and my own hormonal yeah, journey. Too. It makes sense. Yeah. So I'm on my path. And I think for me, it's, am I giving myself permission to take care of myself? Right. We're, I think we're all here and we're so passionate about our mission. I can get lost with work every hour of the day, because I genuinely am so, both all of us here are so passionate that I've had to reel myself in and be like, Yasmin, are you giving yourself permission for you to take that walk in the morning? Take a second to truly eat your breakfast. So I think, you know, I've been telling Kay, I've been recently doing that only this past week, and I already feel significantly better. So it's like giving myself permission to take care of myself and, you know, as much as I want to give to the world and everybody else. (laughs) Yeah. You know what I've been doing? I so resonate with that because one of the things I've been doing is when I look at a day, mm-hmm. if it has space in it, my my brain used to say, oh, I could do this project. Yes. I can do this project. And I've been reminding myself, wait, I could go for a walk. I could yeah. call a friend. I could read a, a fiction book. I could, you know, th- like stop filling the space mm. with more pr- production. So I love I that. Love that. Yeah, it's, and I think we I think we all have to hold each other accountable. Yeah. One of one of the statements I've been using lately is I call it the patriarchal hex. Mm-hmm. I feel like we've all been like in this like like days, like I gotta perform, I gotta perform, I gotta perform. Yeah. And yet our feminine bodies can't keep up mm. with that. So yeah. we have to remember to rest. So I, I love and that. So totally. Okay, Kaya, what what's your definition of health? Yeah, thinking of just what's my measurement of if I feel healthy or not st- since becoming a, a mom, for me, it's do I have the energy and am I present with my child? And that is my measurement of how I'm doing that day. Because if I don't have the energy and I don't, and I'm kind of scattered or I'm looking at my phone or I'm thinking about work, then I can tell that something's off in my body. And I hope that extends into one day. One of my biggest hopes and desires in this world is to be a grandparent to many children. I've always loved that vision of just being a grandmother with so many grandchildren around me and being able to play. Yeah, I just want to be able to play with them and keep up with them for my life. So energy is a huge, Mm -hmm. huge thing for me and the ability to be present to the people in front of me and what's in front of me, the food in front of me, everything that I'm doing versus feeling scattered is is really the way that I look mm-hmm. at it. And then also being able to step into gratitude at any moment and just feel really, really thankful for everything in my life. Those are probably the two presence and gratitude and then the third energy. Mm. Yeah, you, you know, uh, at the tail end of my practice, uh, we did lifestyle, all kinds of lifestyle tools in my practice. And I started to see a trend in women that were five years out from retirement. And they would come in because my practice was in Silicon Valley and they would come in and they'd be like, I got five more years and then I'm out. But the way I feel from the stress of work is that when I get to that five year mark, I'm going to have not be healthy. I need to know how to be healthy. So I I love that you have that long term vision. I think that's part of where we fall apart is we're only thinking of today and what, where we're comfortable today. I always say every single day, every workout I do, every fast I do, I'm thinking about my 90 year old self. Like, what does she need? So I, I just, I think that's beautiful. beautiful. So, well, I love you gals. Oh and I, oh, I could talk you to too. you all day. And again, we're just, thank you for having this collective conversation with me. I just feel like it, we, we're so much more powerful together when we just keep opening this up. 
And I knew in my heart that as I'm talking more and more about food as hormonal medicine, that I couldn't leave seed cycling out, that there had to be a discussion and you gals were it. So thank you for everything you're doing. And I want, when you get your research done, I want you to come back and tell us everything that you've learned. Oh yeah, we would love that. And we're so grateful for you. We're so excited for your upcoming I book. I can't wait to read it and talk about it. And share, thank you for every, share it, all of the things. So thank you so much for having us. Thank you, Mindy, for yeah. paving the way for all of us. We're, we're just so, so inspired by you. Thanks for having us. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Appreciate you.